When working with prescribed displacements, we are often concerned only with the motion that's necessary as an input in order to produce uh, some desired output motion. And what we don't show you often is the force that's needed in order to produce that motion. But even though it's not shown, that force is indeed necessary. And uh, we often call that an implied implicit force uh, that's associated with the motion. And so that's uh, a capital F that isn't necessarily shown to you in the original formulation of the problem. But it is indeed necessary. And uh, a way you can think about it is that there is a uh, just drawing one end of the uh, expanded free body diagram for the damper. You could think of this as being a uh, zero mass object, which has two forces acting on it. It has FB, so if we sum the forces on this zero mass object uh, with displacement X, uh, those forces are going to be FB plus capital F is equal to the mass, which is equal to zero in this case, times its acceleration, X double dot. And that is, again, just telling us that FB is equal to negative F. Let's take a look at another example with a prescribed displacement where we are not initially concerned with the force. We have a two-mass system here with spring in between. X1, the motion of the first mass, is the input. And then X2, the motion of the second mass, is the output. And then uh, I'm just going to uh, draw part of the expanded free body diagram here. I have FK. I have the spring with displacements X1 and X2. And... Fk again, equal and opposite forces, followed by M2 and its displacement X2. So the equation for the spring is K times X1 minus X2. Uh, the sum of the forces acting on M2 are just equal to uh, Fk, and uh, that's got to be equal to M2 times x2 double dot. Uh, we can combine these two equations and what we end up with is m2 x2 double dot. I'm going to move uh, one of the x's over uh, th and that gives us k times x2 is equal to k times x1. So this is indeed a differential equation where we have the outputs of interest x2 on the left and the inputs x1 on the right. And so this is the input-output differential equation satisfying what we were interested in. However, uh, notice that we got away with not even concerning ourselves with what was happening with mass M1. So why don't we uh, just fill that in for curiosity's sake. Here's M1 with the displacement uh, X1. And what we didn't show you, but which you know is a necessary feature of this entire exercise is that there must have been some force that's called F that was acting on this system in order to make this motion possible. So now why don't we just uh, use that and uh, solve for uh, what happens with it. So if we solve for the forces on M1, those forces are capital F minus FK is equal to M1 times x1 double dot. Let's say we were interested in capital F. Then we end up with an equation capital F equals m1 x1 double dot uh, plus fk because I've moved it over to the uh, right. So we have k times x1 minus x2. And so what is this? This is an equation telling us what the implicit force is that's necessary in order to produce the motions x1 and x2. So this is what's needed to produce the motion x1 
and x2. So we call that a, uh, an implicit force uh, relating x1 and x2. So just to summarize that, when we have a system like this, finding a differential equation for x2 as with a prescribed displacement, we get away with ignoring that uh, one of the masses uh, or the end of a, a, the spring or the damper at first. But if we were interested in that force, uh, we would be able to use that mass plus the drawing in the implicit force and summing the forces on this object to come up with that second equation.